Okay, today we're going to be looking at uh, program construction. We're going to be covering translators, compilers, interpreter, and assembler. So, if we just go through, for the exam, you need to be familiar with the following. You need to know what the name, the actual term translator means, stage of the compilation, an example of what type of errors you may come across. So, if we start off with the translators. So in essence, what is a translator? It's basically, when software programmers start to program, they write it in a code that they're familiar with. It's understandable by the programmer, and for yourselves, you, you're probably familiar with uh, Python. However, the actual processor, the computer itself, cannot run that code, so it needs to be translated into machine code so it can be processed. Now, as long as you can understand the basics, translators intrinsically are bit of software that converts the code that you're familiar with, your Python syntax or C based syntax, whatever it happens to be, and converts it from one language to another. There are three types, assembler, interpreter, and compilers. So if you can pause the video and just familiarize yourself with some of the key terms, what a compiler is, what an interpreter is, and what the definition for an actual assembler is. So at this point, pause the video, and just familiarize yourself with those three key terms. Having done that, let's have a look at a compiler. So, a compiler, basically we says it takes the program written by the, the actual programmer, which tends to be in this high level language, and translate it into machine code or object code, as the case may be. An advantage, once you compile with a compiler, and most of you may not be familiar with a compiler, it, it compiles it all in one go. It translates that file, that syntax file, and it, it translates it directly into code that's used by the c computer. And, and this is a subtle difference, it, can, it actually creates an actual executable. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Downsides are that a compiler, it, it does take time to compile, because as we said, it's compiling everything in one go, and then once it's compiled it, if there's an error, you need to recompile it again, and it keeps on g going until such time that there are no errors before it runs a single line of code. As I said, errors are reported, but only after the whole program is tr translated. So, in essence, what on earth does this actually look like? So if we look at what a compiler looks like, and if I just introduce you to Visual Studio, here I've just written a couple of lines of code. Uh, you can see there, it's just our simple hello world program. Here, it'll be just outputting the, the events, and the read line is just me waiting for an input. So that's academic. Let's look what a, what a compiler looks like when, when it runs. So if I start to run the compilation process, it starts off, and it starts thinking about it. It's going through the process, and it's compiling the code. It's doing whatever it needs to do, and eventually it prints out the hello world. All right? Well, that's fine, but I said it compiles everything before it actually runs it. So let's prove that. So if I just go here and actually change this to put um, put an error in here of some sort. Now, if I run it, straight away what happens, it starts to compile, working its way through, and, and it's thinking about it, and this is what we're saying. It takes, oh, and it's come back and said, hold on, we've got an error, we've got build errors. So I can't run anything and nothing gets run at all. So I would have to I'm going to say no to that. I'll have to go back, correct my errors, and uh, rerun the program. And it goes through it, compiling it, checking it, checking all the syntax. And eventually, it loads the actual program and displays the two lines of code which is hello world and those two lines matches up with the two lines of code that I've written there. So that's what a compiler looks like and how it works. Now I said to you this compiler generates an executable. Now the difference between this and an interpreter is this executable, the whole point of it is within a compiler you can run this without having access to the code. So for myself now if I wrote this code this code generates an executable. So let's have a look to see what that executable looks like. So if I can just find it, there we go. So I've got mine stored in my Visual Studio program, Hello World, it's in bin, and here's the actual executable. It's just run. So if I now 
just get that executable, double click on it, it runs. And that's the beauty. I can now give this program, let me close that, I can get this program, give it to someone as an executable, they can run it without the actual source code here. And that's the beauty, you keep the source code separate from the actual end product, which is an executable, which is what I've just generated. Just run it one more time so you can see that. You probably think, I don't know, that's real executable. Well, let's we go back to the source code. If I copy and paste that, as programmers do, uh, let me say, hello world uh, again. All right, run that, provided I've not made a mistake, that should run. So running from the actual uh, in, in programming environment, it goes through, it should generate three hello worlds, and there you have it. Close that, go straight to the executable, timestamp has been increased, double click on that. So that's your executable. All right, so if I get back to this, if you now pause the video and have a look at some of the key terms, when I refer to things such as high-level language, familiarize yourself with what it is. This is the actual syntax that you're familiar with. Source code, this is code that's not been translated. This is the code that you write your program in typically. And the object code is the equivalent of the executable or the actual code which the actual program, or the actual computer, I should say, actually executes. Okay, so if we move on to the next section, which we're looking at an interpreter. Now, interpreter is slightly different. This is what you're familiar with in, in Python. It basically um, gets your program and it translates it, translates a statement literally one statement at a time. So typically, it will go through. It reads a line of code and it keep on going until it eventually re, uh, come across an error, and then it will stop. That's a subtle difference. Um, we tend to use those during development. It's quicker, it's more, more user-friendly for new programmers. Now, the key thing is you need to compile the code each time you launch it. And that it's totally different to a compiler in, in, the, in the way it operates. We do not generate an executable. So each time you run it, it has to be interpreted from scratch every single time. So this is an area or an environment you're familiar with. If I just introduce you to your standard funny program, which most of us are familiar with, here you've got the standard Hello World program. So if I now run that, the interpreter goes through and it runs each line of code, and that's it. Now, if I modify my program, so just to edit clear shell, if I put, put an error in there, the difference is the interpreter reads a line of code, checks it, runs it, checks it, runs it. So if I now run this program, it will go through. It still outputted the very first line of code, hello world, but when we got to the second one, that's when it stopped and realized it had an error. And that's when it stopped the program. And that's the subtle difference between a compiler and an interpreter. With a compiler, this would not have run. With an interpreter, it runs what it can until it gets to an error. So let me just correct that clear my shell and then run it through so at least you know the display is based on the current uh, running of the program. So th there you have it in terms of an interpreter, subtle differences between a compiler and interpreter. We look at an assembler, assembler slightly different, yet again it's used to translate low-level assembler language into machine code, stroke object code. Yet again, w once the program file has been assembled, you can use it again and again without reassembly. It's it's similar to in, in, in the way it operates to, in terms of a compiler. A compiler and assembler, they tend to generate an executable or an output file and then that in itself uh, runs. So, if we look at the timing, yet again, you get the, it translates that assembler language, which is classed as our source code, into machine code. So if you have a look at these next couple of slides, here I've just tried to compare uh, a compiler and an interpreter. It's again, pause the video, take time to, to, to have a look at the advantages and disadvantages between compiler and interpreter as such. All right.
Kampana, you tend to use it when you need to run a program more frequently because what we're saying is it requires less change to the program. So I need the occasional change every now and again. A compiler is probably the best way to go where we generate, generate the actual executable. If I want to actually distribute my code and share it with other people and I want to keep that source code confidential and away from people so they can't copy it, then yet again, that lends itself to a compiler. Okay? So, if we look at the other side of things in terms of an interpreter versus a compiler, students, young individuals are starting to learn to program from, from the off. Oops, sorry. They would probably want to need some feedback straight away. So a compiler is not really helpful in the sense that it just stops and just lists the line of code that it's on, whereas your interpreter will go through and allow you to run parts of the program as and when you need it. Yes, again, pause the actual uh, video and, and take time to look at the advantages and disadvantages. Here I've got just a comparison between all three. Same thing again, you pause the video, take your time, what are the main features of a compiler, it translates high level programming language into machine code, we've got an executable, in terms of an interpreter, we don't have an executable, assembler, we do have an interpreter. And yet again we can see how we compare the errors and so forth. So take time, pause the video and get yourself familiar with that.